Howdy guys, Cal Kellogg here. Welcome back to the channel. If you're not already a subscriber, please help me out. Hit that subscribe button, hit the bell notification, and you'll always know when I'm here on YouTube talking about fishing tactics. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do today. I'm gonna talk about one of my very favorite trout fishing presentations, trout trolling presentations. I get a lot of questions about this. Today, I am gonna talk about trolling soft plastic grubs and this is by the way my new grub kit if you're looking for grubs this is the best value in the grub trolling market bar none you'll find it over at the uh, fishhuntshoot.com tackle shop um, if you're looking for grubs check them out nine different colors all the hooks you need you'll be ready to fish grubs enough about that let's get into grub fishing tactics let me set this down oh, Oh, really nice fish, shit. nice right. fish. Just keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling, keep reeling. Nope, no, no. just, you're doing perfect. Hold it just like that. Gentle lift, gentle lift. That's it, it's in the net, buddy, you got it. Good job. Oh, I'll take the rod. Awesome, look at that big old rainbow, guys. Very cool. Ah, oh, love it. Yeah. Yeah, just keep reeling. Clearly, it's a large fish. Well, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep your tip out there. I'm gonna get a shot at it. Oh my God. He's gonna go crazy now. He's barely hooked. I got him. Right under the surface, 200 feet back. Collins Lake, baby, good job, man. All right. You fought this fish like a pro. of a, a global statement okay and i made this statement a lot here on the channel soft plastics whether we're talking about grubs or tubes or plastic worms or soft plastic body baits soft plastics are the new frontier of trout fishing they're the new frontier of trout trolling they are they are a very unexplored type of bait among trout trollers and that's going to change because they flat out fish they look real they act real, they feel real, and they readily absorb scent. When you add all those factors together, soft plastics are an absolute winner. If you're not trolling soft plastics, you're not catching as many trout as you could be. Let's get into it. Let's talk about rigging three inch grubs and a little bit about grub history. You know, grubs really came into their into their stride up at Eagle Lake, at least among trout fishermen in California. That's what I'm talking about. Um, when Sepp Hendrickson, um, Sepp's pro tackle, he started marketing his small watermelon colored grubs up at Eagle Lake. Um, guys were trolling those at one mile an hour and they worked great. They were absolutely dynamite. Well, guys figured I am catching fish on these over here at Eagle Lake. I'm gonna try them at Lake Berryessa or wherever else. And they found out that there isn't a trout lake in the state of California, probably anywhere in the world where you can't catch trout on soft plastic curly tail grubs, at least at some point, 
throughout the year. You know, they're just like any other bait. There's some days when they won't touch a grub, but uh, very often you can catch fish on grubs and sometimes you can just, just bang the fish up trolling grubs. We had a couple periods this spring when we just had banner grub fishing. Um, I had one week period where it was limit after limit after limit on grubs. A fish that went anywhere from, you know, pan size up to about four pounds. I had another day and I, I forgot how many fish we caught over six pounds, but it was eight or 10 fish over six pounds. All of them came on soft plastic grubs. So they catch pan sized fish, they catch, you know, nice medium sized fish, and they are capable of catching trophy fish. They're the kind of do all bait. Don't get locked into a specific speed. Back in the day, as I said, they used to think we had to troll these slow one mile an hour. My target speed with a grub on the end of my line is usually about 1.8 to 2.2. I'm not afraid to push a grub all the way up to three plus miles an hour, and I will slow down to sub 1.8 at times. So keep an open mind. The other thing to keep in mind, keep in mind about grubs, a couple things. One, you need a variety of colors. You know, some days the fish so, show a pronounced interest in one color over another, and sometimes a subtle change can make for big results. So you just don't know. Sometimes you'll go from an, an olive, you know, a dark olive colored grub to a brown grub or a black grub, and you'll see a big difference in the amount of strikes you're getting. So it's good to have grubs across the spectrum of colors. That's why I have so many different colors in my grub kids. You need to be able to experiment when you're out on the water. Finally, you always want to be using Procure Super Gel with your grubs. Um, they readily absorb scent. And a lot of times when you're fishing a grub, you know, think about it, you got that tail wiggling there. You'll see a fish come in and they'll hit. Now, what you want to do if you're out trolling and you see that at one hit, don't touch the rod. Because a lot of times they're coming in or grabbing that tail. They'll grab it two, three, four times and bite might go on for a minute. And then all of a sudden that rod will just bury. Um, they've built confidence. It feels real. It tastes real, and typically when you get one of those fish to commit, that grub's gonna be way back in, the mouth, in their mouth. And when you see that, you know that fish thought that was real food. They thought it was something real to eat. So there's, there's a ton of ways to rig grubs, but let me show you how I rig them. I've tried just about every rigging method you can imagine, and I'm gonna show you my three favorite ways to rig grubs, and then we'll, we'll close this out talking a little bit about dodgers and flashers. Um, in relation to grub trolling. So let me grab a leader here. I keep it simple when it comes to trout trolling. This is my standard, this could be a worm trolling leader. Eight pound test fluorocarbon, must add slow death hook, just like that. A lot of guys say you don't need the slow death hook when you're fishing a grub because the grub's already gonna rotate. I want that grub spinning like a drill bit. So even though the grub is gonna spin on its own, I still use the slow death hook. Let me grab a grub here. <coughs> Excuse me, I got a tickle in my throat. So here's a nice white grub. I think you'll be able to see this pretty well. Check it, check it out. Let me hold the grub up. It's a standard three inch grub. You'll notice that, that the tail of the grub it bends to one side of the bait, okay, like that. You want the hook point coming out the other side. You want the hook point in opposition to the tail. So the first thing you wanna do, look at that grub and say, well, the tail's coming out that side, so I want the hook coming out this side. Grab your grub, grab your hook, just like this. Insert that hook point into the grub. Start working it down, just like that. Try to keep it in the middle of the grub, you know, as, as best you can, and I wanna bring that hook point all the way down right to the junction of the grub's body and tail and then i'm just going to work it around that slow death hook take your time it's not a race you want to get that grub on there properly that grub is just about perfectly rigged just like that now you see that tail is in opposition to the hook band and look at the bend in that grub. You pull that thing through the water, it is gonna spin like a top. Very important to use a, uh, a trolling swivel, maybe even a rudder, because this is a, this is a line twisting unit. If you just put this on the end of your line and start trolling it, you are gonna have twists like you cannot believe. Um, that's it guys, right there. Probably 70% of the time, that's how I troll a grub. Naked, slow death hook, fluorocarbon leader, keep it simple. 
you're trying to imitate a bait fish or something that just looks like a little victim out there and a uh, a three inch grub does a very good job of that slather on some scent uh, last year my hot scent was the procure sweet corn um, we played with garlic that worked well we played with some bait fish scents those worked well but nothing worked as well as that sweet corn scent for us and uh, that was just a dynamite combination right there naked grub slow death hook keep it simple put it right above the level you think the fish are holding at and get ready to yell fish on just be patient as i said on those bites they'll come in they'll grab that tail they'll mess with that tail give them a chance to commit before you pull the rod out of the holder and uh, you're going to have a really good hookup ratio so that's one way to rig a grub so here's another way i'm back in front of the camera Here's another way to rig a grub, and this is a method <clears throat> you haven't seen me use before, but I used it a lot last year out at Collins Lake, and it worked very well. I was experimenting with a new product, standard leader, same leader as I was using right there, eight pound fluoro, must add slow death hook, but this is pretty popular down at like Comanche and Amador. Guys use power eggs in front of their grubs, but what I got here, I've got my new, they're not available yet, they're on their way, these are trigger eggs. You can still fish them when you're fishing with bait or you can use them for trolling. And I've been using them in front of my grubs. And here's how you do that. Whether you're using one of my trigger eggs or using a, a power egg, whatever, your eggs are all hooked together They're like machine gun bullets. So go ahead, pop off an egg. Just give it a little twist and pull. These are scented. They add scent, they add color, and they add a distinct head to the grubs. Just take your, take your egg, put the hook right through the middle of the egg like that, Let's work that egg all the way up over the hook and onto the leader, just like that. Now, take your grub, figure out that whole tail routine again, insert your hook like so, just like that, slide it down. One of the things I like about my grubs is they're, you see how hard I'm pushing that hook in there? My grubs are tough, they got a lot of body to them and that means they last for quite a while. You can catch a bunch of fish on them. And if you do get a rip in a grub, don't be afraid to bust out a little bottle of crazy glue because you can repair them. Just glue it back together and you'll be able to catch even more fish out of a grub that you thought was no good. So once you got that grub on the hook, I like to leave just a little hook eye out, slide that egg down and just pin that egg on that hook eye right there and if you're really confident that that's what they're hitting today put a little crazy glue on the back side of that egg before you shove it together and that is going to lock everything in place really nicely go ahead put the pro cure on there get that in the water target speed again 1.8 to 2.2 most of the time uh troll it naked and you are going to be hooking up and i love that color when they're feeding on shad call that firecracker that is absolutely money. It's got a little red in it. It's got a little blue in it. Pretty simple, but uh, great bait fish pattern. And I like that with that peach colored egg on there. So you'll be seeing the eggs in the store soon. Don't know when, who knows when anything's gonna be delivered these days, but uh, they're coming. You can use them like this. You can use them for bait fishing. You can also use them when you're out kokanee fishing. I did a little bit of that last year as well. And uh, they're just a very versatile thing to add to your trolling arsenal. So that's that. Let me show you my third method. That one back there. I got a, got a pool floaty on my tripod down here. I got a real real hillbilly setup here. I got, I got pool floaties and stuff all over on my tripod for doing stuff like this. So what I have here, again, eight pound test fluorocarbon, but I have a mini turbo, a turbo spinner on there. Got a couple beads behind it and I added a bobber stop so I can move it up and down the line. I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna team this with the grub for added vibration, added flash. So in this case, I'm gonna use an olive colored grub with green metallic flake. I'm gonna go ahead and insert that hook. I'm not using a slow death on this one. Um, the, the turbo is gonna add all the vibration and flash rotation that I need. But I'm gonna put it on the hook the same way, just work it down, 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 bring that hook out right by the tail. And then I'm gonna shove that grub up beyond the hook. And with that bobber stop on there, let me show you this as it's rigged now. With that bobber stop on there, I can run it with the, 
with the turbo, you know, up the line a little bit like that, or I can bring it down close, you know, like that, or I can move it up here. I could get that turbo up there six inches away from the grub. Once again, put on your Procure, get it in the water. Um, that's very effective. And that was very effective for us last year when we were dealing with some muddy stained water, particularly when that muddy stained water got a little bit cold. Just that added vibration to that little mini turbo, um, it made window shoppers into buyers. Let's talk a little bit about Dodgers and flashers. I'll be right back with you. Hey, I'm back. And I've got here, I've got a mini willow right there and I've got a full size turbo right there. Um, we teamed our grubs with these quite a bit at Collins Lake last year. In fact, on our first trolling trip, Last October, we were running a mini willow with a red grub and a guy named Ed, he popped a 10 pounder on that combination. So clearly that's a winner. Um, we also spend a lot of time pulling the turbo. The turbo, it's, it's a sound factory. Flash, vibration, does it all. Mix and match your colors. I love the silver, I love the metallic stuff, but at times we found the chartreuse stuff, the orange stuff was working well too. But that, that's what I was using last year at Collins Lake, but you gotta think, Collins Lake is a fairly small body of water. If I'm up at Shasta, I might be using two turbos together, I might be using some other more traditional flashers, or I might be using a, a full-size six-inch fisheye dodger. But uh, that's my basic Dodger philosophy anyway. Small lake, I tend to go with the small Dodgers or a turbo flasher like that. Bigger lake, I go with more attraction. Think about it, big body of water. I'm trying to pull fish from deep water and from long distances, so it makes sense to make more commotion. Bigger blade, bigger set of flashers, stuff like that. That's pretty much the story about grubs. If you've been thinking about grub trolling, if you had some questions about grub, uh, grub trolling, I know a lot of guys do because I get a lot of questions about grubs. That's how I fish grubs. Now there's other guys that fish grubs other ways and they probably catch just as many fish as I do, but those are my proven ways of fishing grubs. Naked, um, with the trigger egg, and with the mini turbo flash or the mini turbo spinner rigged up up in front of the grub. Um, those methods have worked for me. Again, I've said this a few times now, use the Procure and don't be over anxious when it comes time to pull that rod out of the holder. Let the fish play with the tail a little bit, let them grab it and taste it. You'll know when it's time to take that rod out of the holder because it's gonna be bucking. You're gonna have a fish on and hopefully, it, hopefully, try to say that, hopefully it's something in the double digit range. I'm out of here. I'm Kel Kellogg. If you want grubs, get on over to fishhuntshoot.com and we will hook you up with one of our grub kits. I'll see you next time here on YouTube, guys.